Welcome to GRMN's Photography School and Creating Sharp Images. One great way to create sharp images is to buy yourself a good tripod. A couple of names I've used in the past are Bogan and Manfrotto, and they both work very, very well for me. Tripods come in a number of different styles. You can buy metal, you can buy carbon fiber. Carbon fibers are very expensive, the metal work very well. The things that you want to look for when you buy a good tripod are how sturdy is it? Does it shake? Does it rattle? Are the legs solid and sturdy so that the tripod does not move? If you lean on the top of the tripod, does the tripod stay stable? Think about all those things and what it can do for you. Put your, bring your camera into the photo store. Try it out on top of the tripod and see how it holds. There are different tripods that are built for different cameras. The heavier your camera, the more sturdy your tripod needs to be. The lighter your camera or the more portable that you want to make your tripod, then you may go to a carbon fiber or a less expensive type of tripod. But make sure that it will hold your camera steady no matter what the situation is. It's very hard to explain how important it is to have great glass on your camera. It's one of the most important things that you can purchase with your camera. Some of the best lenses that are made in the world are made by Zeiss and Leica. Nikon makes wonderful glass. Canon makes great glass. Sigma and Tamron have come a long way in the past years and they are also making very good glass. Be careful when you're looking at the lenses that are available for your camera is to check out all the different features of those lenses so that they will give you great pictures. Some lenses will give you very tack sharp images, other lenses won't. There are ways to correct that in a camera which we'll talk about later, but my recommendation is to go to a site that does reviews on lenses. For example, I read D preview very commonly to see which lenses are the best for my camera. That's located at www.dpreview.com and it gives you a great way to verbally take a look at what lenses will work so that you can go down to your photo store, test them out on your camera, see how they work, see how they feel, are they heavy, are they light, will they stand up to abuse, how do they work with your camera, those are all the things that you need to test. To simply go out and buy an 85 millimeter lens because you want to shoot portraits doesn't really mean much. You want to make sure that you're buying that best glass that's available for your camera. Whether it's a Nikon or Canon, whether it takes Nikon lenses, Canon lenses, or you can actually mount the Sigma or the Tamron lenses onto it. You want to make sure that you're buying the best glass that you can afford for your camera. Now we're going to get to the good stuff. We're going to talk about the real geeky things that you can do to make your camera take better pictures. The first thing I'm going to mention is probably the last thing that you want to do is you want to read your manual. Manuals can be very difficult to read. I've read both Canon manuals, Hasselblad manuals, uh, Nikon manuals, and they're a little bit over the top for me. That's simply me. They may work very, very well for you. What I've always done is I've always gone out and I have bought the Magic Lantern guides uh, for Nikon and Canon, so I was able to read those because for some reason to me they write in English that I understand. It may not work for you, it may work for others, but decide which is the best way to go. But please, please, please read your manual. For example, it's going to lay out things for you that you may not know about your camera. Each camera focuses a little bit differently. There are different ways that you can actually make images sharpen your camera. For example, in a Nikon D300, there's a single point autofocus. There's a dynamic area autofocus. There's an auto area autofocus. And let's not forget manual focus. These can all be used in different circumstances. In a later class, we will be talking very specifically about what each one of these does so that it gives you the right focus for the right job. As an example, I was in the West and I had stopped by the Grand Canyon to take some shots. When I looked out at the Grand Canyon, it was amazing. I picked up my camera, I tried to shoot, it would not autofocus. And the secret to that was I was on the wrong autofocus setting for what I was shooting. Autofocus depends a lot on contrast, lines, and light, and we will focus on those in a later class. 
your camera will allow you to do one other feature, depending on the camera that you have, of course. I know Canon does, and also Nikon does, and depending on what else you're shooting, again, please refer to your manual. But it will allow you to fine-tune your autofocus ability. And I will show you within the next few weeks how to set up test shots so that you can take a series of shots and double check and see how well focused that particular lens is for your camera and then save the attributes for I believe up to two to three lenses. We've talked about a number of things today and I'd like to thank you for your attention. The last image that you'll see in this presentation will be a short list of places that you can go online to either check out equipment or to double check reviews. So hopefully you will enjoy those and once again Thank you for visiting GRM's Photography and creating sharp images.